Hi, thank you for joining me here in the kitchen. My name is Tabea Drebit, and I'm gonna share with you some of the natural treatments that we did for my mom when she was sick. You've already pr probably listened to her testimony of her going through COVID-19. And now uh, I'm gonna share with you some of the simple remedies that we did at home to try to aid her body in helping her recover. These are not necessarily COVID treatments, but these are natural things that you can do at home for a flu or for a cold to aid your body as needed. So I'm gonna to talk to you about some of the more complicated herbs, the ones that you would say are not as more, most common or the ones that you maybe don't see um, in your kitchen um, in a minute. But I'm also gonna tell you that there are many very beautiful herbs that God has created for us that you will find in your kitchen. So when my mom was uh, sick, I was looking in the kitchen to see what can I find to help her. And I had a whole bunch of herbs lined up in the kitchen that we were using that I was growing. And I had sage growing, I had oregano, I had some, some uh, rosemary and thyme and a whole bunch. So I thought, hmm, I wonder if these herbs are helpful. So I started researching it. And sure enough, these herbs are very helpful for flus and for respiratory issues in, in particular. So I have some of these herbs lined up here on this dish and I wanted to talk to you about some of their really beautiful healing properties. So the first little herb here I have is sage. These are very young sage leaves. My sage leaves are much larger, but nonetheless, this is, this is often called a thinker's tea or a throat tea. And the reason for that is because it is antibacterial and antiseptic. So antiseptic is actually antifungal, antibacterial, and antiviral all in one. So it's a really nice uh, herb right there. And uh, it's also high in vitamin A, vitamin K, and vitamin C. So this herb helps throat, uh, coat your throat when your throat is sore or scratchy. Uh, it will help uh, coat it and help you not have so much pain or feel discomfort. discomfort. So the next herb I have here is oregano. So oregano is very common for fighting um, viruses and things like that. You may know of the oregano oil, which uh, I have used many times to fight off any flus or colds that I have had coming on, and it did a very good job fighting it off. So uh, uh, oregano oil or oregano herb is also very good at um, fighting off fevers or respiratory issues, so I would definitely recommend that herb. So the one right beside here I have is thyme. And thyme kind of surprised me because I hate thyme and I did not think that it had any benefits whatsoever um, other than making food taste really bad, just the way my taste buds work, I guess. But surprise, surprise, it's very good. So it is an anti-spasmodic. So if you're coughing really a lot and you can't seem to stop, it's hurting a lot, that would be something I would use to help uh, calm down your um, irritated muscles that are causing the spasmodic coughing. It's also anti-inflammatory and anti-mucus. So it helps take away the mucus that's building up in your lungs and it helps take care of that white coating that might be on your tongue while you're sick. It's also something that's not necessarily for sickness, but it can help uh, not necessarily for a flu, but it can help with the flu situation, uh, which is it's antidepressant. So um, that might be nice if you're not feeling really good and it's taking a long time to get better and you're starting to have bad thoughts, which can happen when you're sick. Uh, antidepressant might help with that as well. So then we have rosemary here, which has quite a lot of properties. It is anti-inflammatory, antispasmodic, antibacterial, uh, antifungal, and antiviral. So it's got all your antis right in there. <laughs> and uh, it has also high vitamin A, vitamin C, and it helps with the fever, the shivers and the aches that you might get right away when you're getting a fever. So that helps soothe any shivering or something like that. Antimicrobial is great if you have any issues with parasites or anything like that. This would help clean that out. And then the next one top on the list is mint. So right here I have spearmint, but peppermint, any type of mint would be really good. And mint is a dilator. So what that does is it dilates your pores and helps you sweat 
or helps you relieve a high fever. It helps you clean out your sinuses. It helps you know keep things moving, helps your blood move. So that one's a really good one as well as mint. And then the last one, which isn't really for flu, but uh, it's really high in vitamin K1, and that is parsley. So parsley is high in K1. It also helps with bad breath or an upset stomach. It helps with digestion. So if your stomach's really hurting, um, I would recommend trying some parsley. So um, that's, that's just the basic kitchen herbs. Now I also have ginger, which is extremely good in fighting off uh, a virus or, or anything like that, and garlic. You can't really fight off anything without garlic. Garlic is your staple. So we have garlic and we also have lemon. So lemon is a cleanser and that helps you um, just keep you hydrated as well. I often find that when you are really thirsty and you feel very um, dehydrated and you don't have any energy, um, having some lemon with the water might just help you feel a lot more um, hydrated. Now, if you don't have the herbs fresh, that's perfectly fine. You can use them dried as well. If you have just them in your kitchen cupboard, um, that would be perfectly fine. It doesn't have to be a fresh thing. Uh, so don't feel um, that just because it's not available or you can't get to the store, it's out. No, no worries, you can use dry. Another one that's really common in the kitchen is cayenne pepper. And this is something that I would highly recommend this um, helps circulate your blood. It also helps drive uh, herbs to the right um, part of your body. It's known as a thinking herb. And the reason why it's a thinking herb is not because it promotes your thinking like the sage does, but because it knows where to go. So if you have a problem with your heart, you will take cayenne and you'll feel heat in your heart. Or if you have a problem in your lungs, you'll feel heat in your lungs. So it's quite the clever little herb in that sense that it can go where you need it and it also brings nutrients and things that are in your blood that need to get to that spot, to the spot. So um, cayenne is really good. It also helps with blood thinning. People have used cayenne when they're getting a stroke or a heart attack. Uh, they'll quickly take cayenne pepper and quite a bit of it and that can prevent those things. So any blood clotting or anything like that would be uh, a really positive one is cayenne pepper. But if you only have cayenne pepper, you don't have any other type of blood thinner, you need to have quite a bit. So I would definitely recommend uh, talking to, to your doctor or a, a medical professional about a blood thinner, but um, cayenne pepper does aid in that as well. Another one is turmeric. So turmeric powder, the little, the little yellow stuff that dyes your blender and all your kitchen stuff, if you have the fresh stuff. Um, this is also really good. It's anti-inflammatory. It's one of the strongest anti-inflammatories that I know of that's a herb, um, is, is uh, turmeric powder. So that can help when, when you have a problem in your body. The first thing your body does is it, it, it brings blood to that spot or it brings uh, nutrients to that spot and that can cause inflammation and sometimes it's not helpful so it creates discomfort so this helps relieve that and uh, help you heal so the next one I'm going to talk about is honey honey is really important for fighting a flu and for fighting um, a cold or anything like that and some people are afraid of honey because they say it's a sugar uh, they also think it might be um, not real, but in every country it's different. In Canada, our honey is 100% honey. We don't add sugar to our honey just because we have so much of it here. We're a really huge honey producer in Canada, kind of like maple syrup, so we don't have to add any artificial stuff to our honey. Um, so most of them is quite, quite good. And um, so with the honey, it's antibacterial. It also helps coat your throat and soothe it. And I think Ellen White actually talks about honey and eucalyptus as a cough remedy or a herbal throat coat as well. So I recommend honey. Now, 
Uh, another one that's getting a little bit more sophisticated, you may not have this in your kitchen as readily, would be eucalyptus, but this is really, really helpful when you're fighting a flu. It's also a dilator. It's specifically a lung dilator. So this would be something I would recommend if you have any sinus inf infection or you're stuffed up or you have a cough, this would help open things up and help relieve any feelings of uh, stuffiness or um, hard to breathe or anything like that. Now, um, getting more into the advanced things, things that are not as common, I will explain to you some of those as well. So another one would be echinacea. Echinacea is very good. Echinacea is an antibiotic and an immune booster as well. So echinacea is very common too when you're dealing with um, colds and stuff. You'll find it in some teas. If you go to the store, you usually find like a herbal immune booster tea. It'll have echinacea in it most likely. And um, so that's quite common, but it isn't very common to have echinacea just on its own. But it would be good to source it if you can and get that in your kitchen. Now, mullen. So I'm going to talk to you about mullen. Mullen is one of the top lung herbs out there. Dr. Christopher and a lot of other leading um, doctors in health and in herbs recommend mullen for your, um, for your lungs. They say it's like the best. Now, every body is different, so you may not react to melon as well as you might react to something like lobelia or even uh, cold's foot, which is something that they have in Europe. It's not as common in North America, but uh, I would recommend melon because it helps your lungs. It also helps your digestion. It's a digestive, digestive aid. Another good uh, lung herb is lobelia. I don't have a sample of lobelia here. But something to note is lobelia is a spasmodic, not an anti-spasmodic. So if you take too much, it will make you throw up. But it is quite powerful herb. And I know Jethro Kloss in his uh, Back to Eden book has a little testimony there of somebody who was dealing with um, coughing, chronic coughing, and was helped with lobelia herb. So another few that I don't have and one that I do have is astragalus. Astragalus is good also for fighting off colds and flus, marshmallow root, a uh, whole bunch of other ones, slippery elm, those would all help as well depending on the type of flu, the type of cold that you're fighting off and what symptoms you're having, uh, diarrhea, different types of things would help with that. But you can always check out the lectures from Walt Cross um, on our channel Amazing Discoveries. He talks about some of those different herbs and their uses as well. Now the last few ones I have here on the table are um, golden seal. Now this golden seal is in a tincture. You can get the herb. I personally have used the powder. I, we just got this so I haven't really used this recently. But um, the powder and any other form of golden seal is very powerful. It's a very expensive herb but it's quite strong in fighting off um, any kind of infection as well. And the last but not least here is black seed oil. So black seed oil, we personally did not get in time. We had to order it, and by the time it arrived, uh, my mom was doing already much better. But black seed oil is something that everybody does recommend as it is quite antioxidant and helps with a few symptoms as well. Now, apart from herbal and tea treatments, the w number one thing that I think helped my mom the best was the hydrotherapy. Now, we are not going to demonstrate how to do hydrotherapy in this summit because we have done it in the past. So you want to take a look at that video on how to do hydrotherapy if you're not familiar. But hydrotherapy is absolutely key with fighting off uh, flus and colds. And it's very well promoted and talked about by the Spirit of Prophecy as well. So I would definitely recommend uh, looking into that. Uh, we did hydrotherapy on her chest and on her back, and uh, it de definitely brought wonderful results. She also nebulized. So here's a little nebulizer, and uh, in the top, you add distilled water. It must be distilled because it's going into your lungs, and you don't want anything that could be in the water to hurt you. So you would put distilled water in here, and then we did four drops of eucalyptus oil. 
and we would just turn it on. And then the steam would come out from here and you might need to add a grain or two of salt uh, just to make it run, it helps with that. And then the steam comes out here, it's not hot, it's not cold, it's just steam that comes out and you inhale that and her oxygen levels would go up from 92 all the way up to 98 just by nebulizing with some eucalyptus oil. People have also done uh, food grade hydrogen peroxide in there. They've also done silver and they've also done the oregano oil and they've all had success with that. But we did the um, eucalyptus and we did find that her oxygen went up quite high from that as well. So let's make some tea. I'm going to show you how uh, the tea we made and it's going to be mullein tea because I would really recommend this one as the number one herb to use for, for lung support. You can do the other ones as well, and if you don't have mullein, then for sure, but you want to do uh, the ones, this one as number one and the rest as supplementary if you can. So we'll grab a pot here, and I'll show you how to do it on the stove. So for mullein tea, it's one liter or one quart to half a cup of tea leaves. That's very strong. Usually it's a cup to a teaspoon and we're going to make it a little bit stronger because, you know, we're sick, right? So we'll turn on the water, put in the leaves. Oh, another one I, I didn't talk to you about the herb is uh, um, elderberry. Elderberry is a very good immune supporter as well. So I would recommend adding some elderberry um, berries right into here. I don't have any, so we won't but uh, elderberry is really good. So we'll add some sage. We'll add some sage. Okay, just take them off. You can add the whole thing, it's no big deal. And let's add a little bit of this thyme leaves, I think. Why not? And you can add a little bit more water. If you're adding other things, you can add a little bit more water to, to um, supplement it, but um, we'll just keep it strong. Okay. Now you bring this to a boil. And uh, as soon as it boils, you can turn it off and just let it cool down for about 10 minutes. Okay, so the tea has been simmering here for about 10 minutes after it uh, boiled. We turned it off. It's been resting, so it's time to drink it. So we can just get any type of tea strainer that you have. I'm going to grab this one here that we have here. And uh, if you have just a sieve, that's totally fine. But I'm going to put it here in this French press. Just pour it in. Okay. And then we can put the lid on to put all the herbs down to the bottom. And then we can go ahead cup. Now I'm going to add some honey because honey is really helpful in this type of situation. It helps soothe the throat and everything. So I wouldn't be afraid of honey. You can just stir it in. And there's your tea. I hope this demonstration was helpful for you, uh, knowing some of the natural remedies that we did that helped my mom. I hope they help you as well. May God bless. Take care.